For today's video, we are talking about the percent equation. So our learning target is I can solve percent problems using the percent equation. Please write down what you already know about this. You already know about percent problems. Um, our last video was out about the percent proportion, so you'd know one way to solve percent problems that you could write about. Please write down the date that you're watching this video for your own records. And then we have no vocabulary today. Pause the video here until you get all that written down and then restart when you're ready to go. Talk about the percent equation. The percent equation is the second way to solve problems that you could also solve with the percent proportion. So we've already learned the percent proportion. Today I'm going to teach you the equation. And I want you to try to work with the equation today. And then after that, you can use either the percent proportion or the percent equation to solve percent problems. They're both equally good. This is just two different ways, and some people like the percent proportion more, and some people like the percent equation more. So whichever one makes your brain happier, that is the one that you should use. So the percent equation is that the part equals P times the whole. And just like in the percent equation, for the part, we have the clue word is, and for the whole, we have the clue word of. The other thing, however, we need is that P for the percent equation is a little different. For the percent equation, P is the percent, but you have to first write it as a decimal. And that's really, really important. You're not going to be able to get the right answers. You're going to get crazy big numbers um, unless you have P as the percent as a decimal. So there is one extra little step. Um, but other than that, it is very, very, very similar. So just like in the percent equation, we will always start by identifying the part, identifying the whole, identifying the percent, plugging those things in where we can fit them and then solving. So let's look at this first problem. Your class has raised 80% of its goal of $8,000 for a trip to Washington, DC. How much money has your class raised? So if we want to use the percent equation, which is that the part equals the percent times the whole. If we start filling in the things that we know, I see that we have 80%. 80% is my percent. First, I have to turn that into a decimal. To turn a percent into a decimal, I divide by 100. 80 divided by 100 is 0 0.8. The next thing I see is that it says of $8,000. That means the $8,000, it has that clue word of, so that means it is my whole. And then the part is what I will be looking for. So now all I have to do to solve this is 0 0.8 times 8,000, which gets me 6,400, and that equals my part. So the answer to my question, how much money has your class raised? The answer is $6,400. So that's how we use this to solve questions. So we're going to walk through a few examples here um, and a few different ways that this could look. So for our first one here, what number is 20% of 110,000 or 110? Apologies. So looking at this, I see that I have 20% that's my P, and I have of 110. Of 110 means that this is my whole. So in my equation, part equals percent times whole, my percent, 20%, 20% 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.2. My whole is 110. And my part is the unknown. All that's left now is just to multiply 0 
times 110, which gives me 22. So my answer is that 22 is 20% 20 of 110. And that's all. So the first problem that I would like you to do is see if you can follow the same steps to solve this problem right here. What number is 25% of 88? Using the same steps as what we did right above. What number is 25% of 28? It's very, very similar problem to the last one. So I think that you are going to be able to do that. Okay. Continuing on here, what percent of 150 is 90? So already looking at this, I see that this is a little bit different from my last problem. My last couple problems, I had a percent written in there. This problem doesn't have the percent, so we need to be careful. I see that I have of 150, which tells me that this is the whole. And I see that I have is 90, which tells me that this is the part. So this time, my equation is, if I have, know that part equals percent times whole, I'm going to have 90 equals P times 150. Because of that equation, the part equals the percent times the whole. I know 90 is my part and 150 is my whole. Okay, so to figure out what P is, I need to solve this. So all I need to do is divide by 150 on each side. That P by itself. This is another thing we've done already this year. Then I just do 90 divided by 150, which gives me 0 0.6. Zero point six is my percent. It's P. This is my percent as a decimal. To turn it back into a percent, I need to multiply by a hundred, which gives me sixty percent. So I would like you to, for your second problem for the check, this next problem here is very, very similar to the last one we just did. It's going to give you the part, and it's going to give you the whole. So just like I did up above, if you know what the part is, and you know what the whole is, set up your equation and see if you can find the percent. Remember this step at the end it will be as a decimal and you will need to turn it back into the percent. So for your second answer for your check, I would like you to solve this problem. 50 is what percent of 250? Again, you need to turn it all the way back into a percent. So for our next problem here, the next thing that this could look like, the number 117 is 45%, and this should say of what number? So let's go through here. I see that I have 45%, so that's my P. I also see that I this says 117 is, 117 is means that this is my part. So setting this up again, I know my part equals P times the whole. The part is 117. So that is 45% is P. I got to divide that by 100. When I do that on my calculator, I get 0 0.45. And that will be times the whole. So 117 equals 0 0.45 times something. Well, I can set this up again. 
divide by 0 0.45 and divide by 0 0.45. 117 divided by 0 0.45 gives me 260. And that is my whole. That's my answer. So this last one, this one is once again similar to the one above. Again, it gives you the percent and it tells you 130 is, which means that is the part. So just like in the last example I did, you have the part, you have the percent, and you're going to be finding the whole. So this will be your third check, your third problem for the check in order to get to the assignment. It's really, really important that you do these checks and that you get the practice in so that you understand all this. Please let me know if you need help with any of these or with anything else. Thank you so much and have a great day.